Hi everyone, it's Faye here. So we thought this topic would link in quite nicely after microbiology and also it's quite topical. Um, as you might know, at the end of the C3 paper, there's a choice of one of three optional modules. So we follow option A, which is immunology and disease. And so this week we'll cover the disease part and then antibiotics and the immune response will be covered later in your A2 year. So disease lesson one, um, the causes, symptoms and treatments of these five diseases were covered in your independent study video. So the aim for this lesson is to use that information and explain it and apply it to a few different things. So the five diseases in the spec are all slightly different in their causes. You've got two bacterial diseases. However, cholera is caused by a gram-negative bacteria and tuberculosis by a rod-shaped bacteria that is so difficult to stain it shows as neither gram-positive or gram-negative. You've also got two viral diseases, smallpox caused by a DNA-containing virus and influenza caused by an RNA-containing virus. The influenza is much more prone to mutation, hence why smallpox has been eradicated, but the influenza virus hasn't. The fifth disease, malaria, is caused by a prostoctistum who also has a high rate of mutation, making vaccination difficult. So in the independent study video, we talked about symptoms, causes and treatments of malaria. But to really prevent it, we need to know a bit more about both the life cycle of the vector, which is the mosquito, and the life cycle of the parasite in order to exploit their weak points. Malaria is caused by the protoctistum plasmodium and transmitted by the female Anopheles mosquito. The male mosquitoes feed on plant nectar, so they aren't a problem, but when the female pierces the skin to take a blood meal, that's when she can transmit the protoctistum. It's best to try and prevent being infected with malaria in the first place. So preventions revolve around avoiding bites with nets and insecticides, and trying to slow the reproduction rate of the mosquitoes by removing their access to egg laying sites so you could drain the stagnant water areas or you can introduce fish to kill the aquatic mosquito larva. With the plasmodium drugs can't attack it when it's inside your cells so the effectiveness is limited to when it's in the blood. Quinin and artemisinin were developed but plasmodium is developing resistance to these drugs as it mutates frequently and has many antigenic types and we'll talk a bit more about antigenic types in lesson two. So the slight differences between all these diseases makes them very useful to use to practice compare and contrast style questions. Quite often students lose marks on these questions because they either just list differences between the two without thinking of any similarities, or they write one paragraph on the first bit, so a whole paragraph say on influenza, and then a separate paragraph on the second disease. And they don't use any comparative statements. So make sure your language is comparative. So use words such as whereas, however, more, less. So for example, although both influenza and smallpox have vaccines available, the higher rate of mutation in influenza makes vaccination much harder than in smallpox, which has a lower rate of mutation. Another common error is just simply to say there is a difference without actually expanding on what that difference is. So you could just say influenza and smallpox contain different genetic material. But you should know what genetic material each one has and you need to show your examiner that you do know that. So it'd be much better to say smallpox and influenza have different genetic material, influenza contains RNA whereas smallpox contains DNA. So use this opportunity to see how much of your independent study you can recall in terms of the causes, symptoms and treatments of the diseases. Activity one on your worksheet is be comparing them. Um, so use your brain to start trying to fill in your causes, symptoms and treatments. And when you've exhausted that, use your notes and textbook to see if you've got anything else to add. When you come to writing in box five, make sure you use comparative language and make some clear statements. Don't worry about being really obvious about the point you want to make. You want to be obvious. You want to show your examiner what you know and therefore make it really easy for them to give you the marks. Okay, press pause, complete this, and then come back to the video. So 
So hopefully once you filled out those first two boxes, you were able to then identify similarities and differences and make your comparative statements. So rather than just giving you a whole screen of text, I've used black writing for similarities, red for cholera and green for tuberculosis. So first about the causes, I could say both of them are caused by bacteria. However, the Vibrio cholerae bacteria is gram negative, whereas Mycobacterium tuberculosis is neither. Tuberculosis is transmitted through air, whereas cholera is, involves water transmission. Tuberculosis infects the lungs, causing chest pain, cough and fever, whereas cholera infects your small intestine, causing diarrhoea and dehydration. Both can be treated by antibiotics. With tuberculosis, you need long-term antibiotics, whereas only cholera will be treated with water and iron replacements. Both of them can have vaccinations for prevention of those diseases, but with cholera, it's only a temporary protection given to those at high risk. Whereas with tuberculosis, the BCG vaccination will give you a 75% protection for the next 15 years. Remember, treating tuberculosis is really difficult because of antibiotic resistance. So with TB, the main focus is on preventing it. So comparing and contrasting your influenza and malaria. So influenza is in blue, red for malaria and black again for similarities. So influenza has an RNA containing virus, whereas malaria is caused by the protoctistum plasmodium. Influenza involves aerosol transmission, whereas malaria is transmitted by vectors, which are the mosquitoes. Both of these can cause epidemics, can cause pandemics. Um, symptoms, both diseases will cause a fever. Um, however, influenza will also give you a sore throat and malaria will also give you nausea. In terms of treatments, um, again, the main thing is preventing. You want to prevent transmission by destroying the vector for malaria and you want to prevent transmission of influenza with good hygiene. For both you can have vaccination you can be vaccinated against but again the many antigenic types caused by mutations can cause problems and we'll talk more in lesson two about how those antigenic types have come up.